Hi, my name is Brian Smith. In this video, we're going to cover satellite remote execution. This video assumes you've already done the initial remote execution setup with SSH keys. If you're not familiar with that, please refer to the satellite documentation for help. All right, to get started, we're going to go to host and then all host. Then we're going to select a few hosts here that we want to run a remote execution job on. Then we're going to go to select action and schedule remote job. You can see that the search query here was pre-filled out with the name of the host that we selected on the previous page. If we click the preview button, we can see a list of the hosts that the command is going to be run on. For the command, we're going to run who am I, host name, and uptime. We're going to leave the schedule on execute now, and then go ahead and click submit. This will take us to a status page, and over on the right we can see a, a progress graph here showing the, the status of the jobs running on the host. We can also go to the host tab here and click on the name of a host to actually see the output of the command. You can see here the output of who am I, host name, and uptime. Next we're going to look at job templates. We'll start by going to monitor and jobs and then we'll click on the run job button. Before we use the commands job category, this time we're going to look at other job templates and specifically we're going to click on services here. You can see when we did that, some additional fields popped up down here. We now have an action and a service. If we go over to this other tab that's on job templates, which is, which is under host, job templates, we can see that the service action SSH default that we selected is here. And that lines up with the job category and job template we selected here. All right, if we look down here at the uh, template, we can see the logic behind this template. Basically, if it's a Red Hat operating system that's greater than version 6, we're going to use the systemctl command followed by the action and then the service name. Otherwise, if it's a rel 6 or below, we're going to use the service command followed by the service name and then the action. If we go over to the job tab, we can see where these uh, additional input templates were, um, were specified. We have an action that has a restart, start, stop, and status option. And we also have a service um, option here, which is a freeform text. If we go back to the other tab here, we'll go ahead and run this um, job template we'll select a search query of name equals openstack10.example.com and we'll leave the action on restart and the service will be sshd. This will cause sshd to be restarted on this one openstack10.example.com server. We can watch the status here, go to the host tab, click on the server name and see that the ex exit status was zero meaning it was successful. Next we're going to look at search queries in more detail. If we go to monitor and jobs and then click Run Job. Here in this search query field, previously we, we've just done basic queries such as name equals and then an individual host name. In this example, we'll say name equals rel7sandbox2.example.com. If we click Refresh and Preview, we can see that this resolves to one individual host. But this is much more flexible. We can say things like OS equals Red Hat and OS underscore major equals either 7 or 6. We'll say 6 in this example. If we click refresh and preview, we can see that this resolves to all the RHEL 6 servers that we have registered to satellite. We could also even do something like registered underscore at greater than 10th uh, August 2018, and this will show the servers that were registered with satellite after August 10th. Now, if you're not sure what um, search query fields are available to use, one thing you can do is go over to Host and All Host, click on the filter bar here, and this will show you the list of fields that you can use. We'll select Content View, and then we'll say Equals, and then we'll say Rel7. And what we've just done here is built a custom search query that we can use on remote execution jobs as well. Just copy and paste this over into your remote execution job. Another thing we can do is see a history of previously run commands. If we go to monitor and jobs and then click on one of the previously run jobs we can see the date and time that the job was run at and if we go to the host tab we can click on a server name and see the output. 
So this allows you to see a history of what was run and the output of those commands. So far we've looked at running remote execution commands from the web interface. However, you can also use the hammer job invocation create command line interface to run commands as well. We'll specify a search query here of os equals red hat and os major equals six and the command will be cat etsy red hat release. When we run this, we'll get a job invocation ID number 70 and then a status bar. Next, we're gonna take this job invocation ID and run a while loop that will loop through all of the servers that this ran on and show the output of the command. So we'll change this my ID variable to 70 and then we have a loop here that will basically take the output of ha hammer job invocation to get a list of servers and then do a hammer job invocation output to show the output from those servers. So if we run that, we can see the three servers it ran on as well as the output of cat etsy red hat release on each of those servers.